Yeah, what's good? It's your boy PB3G and Secret Invasion. So Marvel just dropped a new featurette for, you know, the Secret Invasion show that drops next month on the 21st. And I haven't really been too pumped for this show. You know, when you're a comic book fan and you, you know, you, you lived through the original comic book run and you, you saw how they handled Civil War, you kind of know what you're getting from this show. You know, you're not going to get the you know, well, Tony Stark's dead, but you're not going to get the Captain America. You're not going to get the Thor, Spider-Man showing up in this. I doubt if even Rhodey, who is in this in this show, I doubt he even suits up. So it's just like you kind of know what you're getting. And I wasn't excited, but seeing this feature right today and reading up on the plot leak and stuff like that, I'm kind of low key, you know, open to seeing what's going on with this show. So I got some information you know, a breakdown of the plot and what's going on and some of the characters in the story and a rumored character that's been rumored for the MCU for a long time may be showing up as well. I'm going to speak about that at the end. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm going to read through what Marvel Spoiler Reddit has collected from all the various top leakers about the Secret Invasion show. And I'm going to give my overall thoughts at the end. Please subscribe to the channel, gang. So... The series will be much smaller in scale than the comic book event it's adapting. As put by executive producer Jonathan Swartz, quote, Well, there were more characters in Secret Evasion, the comic series, than there were in Endgame. So no, it's not that, but it very much is a showcase for Sam Jackson and Ben Middleson and tapping into the paranoia elements of the Secret Evasion comic series that was great with the twists and turns that the that that took. So that's certainly out of focus more than can we cram in more characters than Endgame, like publishing. Samuel L. Jackson actually revealed that Nick Fury won't be calling the Avengers for a very good reason. Quote, what he's not doing is calling in his super friends. So that's part of the whole dilemma. I mean, people want them and he's not bringing them. There's a very good reason he's holding back. End quote. So 30 years ago... T the character Talos promises people that they would find a planet called home. In present day, things are still not looking good for the scrolls. Thus, the rebel Gravik has rallied up and radicalized some uh, some scrolls, including Talos' own daughter Gaia, to go rogue and seize the resources they need. First quietly while in disguise, then by force if needed. As Amelia Clark puts it, quote, it's hard in her, for sure. There's a kind of punk feeling that you get from this girl. She's a refugee kid who's had a tail had Talos for a dad. You know what I mean? These people promised a lot of stuff a long time ago and not a lot has happened. So understandably, a certain amount of resentment has been built, end quote. Fury has been shaken by what's happened on Earth the last couple of years with the blip and Tony's and, the and Natasha's death. And this is why he has secluded himself in the Sword Space Station. He doesn't believe he can fix things anymore and thus doesn't know what his place in the world is. He doesn't wear his eye patch to signify the vulnerability as the patch is the signature of a strong fury, as Jackson puts it. Executive producer Jonathan Swartz adds, quote, sins from his past start to haunt him once again. We often see Nick Fury doing the right thing. We don't always see him doing it in, in, in a perfectly morally correct way. All of those things have ramifications. Without getting too specific, the things that Nick Fury ha has had to do to protect the Earth has cost. Nick had a whole scroll spy network because they could shapeshift and go places that people couldn't. They kept their word. They worked for him, but he hasn't done what he, he said he was going to do. They want a home. They want to live. They want to live like they are. They want to live in their skin. They want to live in ours. Quote, end quote. While the series was mostly filmed in London and other places around the UK, a large chunk of it will take place in Russia around the time of Russia's Unity Day, which is on November 4th, if we assume it takes place in MCU present day 2025. That makes it one of the latest additions to the MCU timeline, with the only projects taking place after it being the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special and Werewolf by Night, which take place in December and GOTG there three sometimes in early sometime in early 2026 shortly after the events of the special the rogue faction of scrolls have occupied old soviet nuclear power plants 
Unlike the comic book version in the series, the scrolls will mostly be impersonating government and law, for, uh, law enforcement officials. The show takes inspiration from the Cold War espionage thrillers of John Le Carr and shows like Homeland and the Americans. Classic espionage noir movies like The Third Man, but also westerns like The Searchers. Martin Freeman called the series quite labyrinthine in terms of storytelling and the amount of people crossing over with each other. He also added, the bits I've read do, do feel different, I guess. That storytelling process is just elongated. The show will follow the events of Black Panther Wakanda Forever, in which Everett Ross was arrested for sharing confidential information with Wakanda before es escaping and being branded a fugitive. It will also lead directly into Armor Wars, the upcoming movie starring Don Cheadle as Rhodey. While the U.S. president in this series is Ritson, played by Dermot Mulroney, who was referenced in a news ticker in Wakanda Forever, Kevin Feige has confirmed Thunderbolt Ross will be the U.S. president by the time Captain America New World Order comes around. This puts Ritson's fate at risk, especially considering it seems like his car is being hit by a missile in the trailer. Rhodey will play the president's right-hand man in this series. Olivia Coleman's Sonia Fals Falseworth is the British European equivalent of Nick Fury. She mostly works behind the scenes, pulling the strings and or organizing operations. She's ostensibly motivated to protect England's national security interests during the crisis, which puts her on Fury's side at some, circ at some circumstances and against him in others. As Jackson said, Quote, she's cold-blooded and just relishes being that person, end quote. The Department of Damage Control and SWORD will play a role in the series. According to Kevin Feige, the show will explore the period of the blip, but won't be set exclusively during that period. Samuel L. Jackson praised this part of the show's direction as he said, quote, The minds that are putting together what happened during the blip are fantastic. That's part of what we're uncovering during this series. Now, according to cast member Christopher McDonald, Marvel Studios brought in a new writer to rewrite parts of the series before the reshoots took place during August 2022. As McDonald put it, the new writer has amped it up and the series is going so much deeper than before. Now, on to the mystery character that has been rumored for the MCU for some time now, for some years now. Chloe Bennett's Quake will return in the series, but possibly for a very small role. Now, that's all the information I have on Secret Invasion, the TV show that I got from the Marvel spoiler Reddit, who got theirs from various leakers around the community. You know, um, I kind of like the way this show is, is setting up, even though we don't got the flashy name brand superheroes. And, you know, the scrolls are only going to be impersonating government officials and, and law enforcement and stuff like that. And probably regular people as well. You know, I, 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 it'll be nice to see Nick Fury get some shine where he's the main focus or, or at least the top main focus or something like that. You know, Samuel Jackson, I think he's played this role perfectly. And I think, you know, some people may have preferred this as a movie. Maybe me too, but I'm not mad at a Disney Plus show. I think this one will be pretty good. You know, like I said, they had the rumored Chloe Bennett, who's been rumored for the MCU for a long time. Supposedly, she's supposed to show up in this show as well, but in a small role. So maybe not until the end as a secret weapon for Fury, I'm assuming. But we'll have to wait and see. You guys let me know what you think about you know all this information i have given you about secret invasion are you excited are you like whatever because there's no avengers showing up let me know in the comment section below please subscribe to the channel to continue getting updates like this about the mcu dcu james gunn kevin feige avengers justice league all that good stuff check out my new video i did on jonathan majors um he went to court tuesday this week and it's not looking very good. So if you want to find out and get all the information about the Jonathan Majors case, check out the video on the screen now. I also did a, a Blade video ab about, you know, what's going on with the postponed Blade movie and some characters that's being introduced. Check out those two videos on the screen now. Make sure you subscribe and turn on all notifications so you know when the next video drops. It's your boy PP3G. I holla. Gang.